wontons are one of the most ubiquitous styles of dumplings. They also seem to be the most chameleonic in terms of preparation and filling. They've come to symbolize Chinese American food more than any other dumpling, often fried and tucked into countless takeout containers of chow mein and orange chicken. Sometime during the last century, the wonton went from a humble, thin-skinned dumpling often served in soup to a deep-fried combination plate side dish and a popular vessel for crab and cream cheese. The history of the wonton in America, like the history of any food, is a string of adaptations to circumstance. So, how exactly did we get here? On this week's episode, we'll explore two disparate styles of wontons, with a visit to Yang Chow, one of the oldest Chinese restaurants serving Mandarin and Sichuan cuisine in LA, and the P.F. Chang's restaurant chain. Would we like a fireball shot? For two seconds, I thought you were like, we're going to oh, go to the bar and do shots, shots of yeah. fireball. And I was, we like, could do I was like, wow, Steve, that's fireball. really taking the video to another <laughs> level, right? Fireball shots. The original Yang Chao restaurant opened in Chinatown in the late 70s. Over the years, the restaurant's slippery shrimp and spicy wonton soup helped Yang Chao garner a celebrity clientele, with photos of the many famous patrons on the walls. The dedicated following fueled the restaurant's expansion to multiple SoCal cities, including Pasadena. It's still a family-run business, helmed by Benny Yuan, whose father and grandfather opened the first Yang Chao. Tell me about where your family's from and kind of how you opened, how they opened the first Yang Chow. So my family is actually from, my dad's from the city of Yangzhou, and they have like five brothers and one sister. And my mom's from Taiwan, but uh, my dad came down to New York with my, grandpa, my grandfather. So my grandfather actually got recruited in New York to go down from China, to go to New York to cook for a restaurant. And uh, the owner actually brought his entire family down. After he started doing better, he ended up moving to LA and starting his own restaurant in LA. So before Yang Chao, he had another restaurant that probably didn't do as well. So he ended up going to the one in Chinatown. And from then on, he actually did pretty well. So yeah, it oh. took a while though. It took like five years before he started making money, but he started making money, you know, sooner than later. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I guess why focus on like Szechuan and Mandarin styles of food? So there's different types of wontons. There's the Cantonese style where you got a whole bunch of filling inside, mm -hmm. and there's this style where there's minimal filling, and you're basically eating the, you're basically using the wontons to collect all the flavors from the soup. Yeah, you have like floppy tails, yeah. which I like. <laughs> yes. So basically, all, this is just basically soaking all that flavor. So the longer you let it soak, the more flavor that's actually, you know, inside the wontons. Mm -hmm. so. At Yang Chow, the spicy wonton soup is a favorite served as more of a giant bowl of dumpling dipping sauce than an actual soup. It's made primarily with vinegar, soy, and chili, and hot broth is added to turn the condiment into a highly slurpable soup. So did you grow up working at any of the restaurants, like as a kid? If I want to have fun, my, dad, my grandfather throw a big thing of uh, snow peas on the table let me peel the snow peas when I was two or three years old. Sit there and just peel snow peas all day. Let you? Like it was a fun treat or asked you to do no, it? No, let me do it. Okay. Because okay. there's nothing else to do. Remember, mm -hmm. when you're stuck in a restaurant all day and there's nothing else to do and you see something that, you know, oh, that looks fun. You're two or three years old, anything's fun, so. Like when you guys first opened in Chinatown, you said it kind of took a while for it to get popular. Yeah. Were there many non-Asian people eating at the restaurant or was it like all Chinese people? It was actually people? all the Chinese people. It was all Chinese people initially, and then slowly they started bringing friends in, and then, you know, offices, they would bring their friends in, all of a sudden it just slowly started spreading. So that now there's barely any Chinese, but all like, it's really mixed in Chinatown. So over there, yeah, I'd probably see like probably two, maybe three Chinese tables a day, versus like before it was all Chinese, now all of a sudden it's complete opposite. There's barely yeah. any Chinese, and just everyone else. It's a very multiracial place, I guess, mm -hmm. so. Let me ask you about the popularity of wonton specifically. Because I feel like so many places, like Americanized Chinese places, mm -hmm. serve wontons. And I feel like it's the m most, maybe soup dumpling now might be the most recognizable dumpling, but I feel like for a long time it was the wonton, whether it be in soup or fried. Right. Um, wh why do you think the wonton has been so popular, like amongst like Chinese American restaurants? 
It's just easy, and I think it's just easy. I think it's just easy. It's like very simple, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, meat, carbs, just very easy to eat too. I mean, it's it's like you know, carrying a burrito or a hamburger. You know, it's just so easy. It's like this one's just like a one bite wonder. You know, it's like all of a sudden just take one bite and just, just put it down. So. One bite wonder. You're dropping all kinds of gems. <laughs> Also, I'm going to ask you about um, just how things have go been going since the pandemic, because I read a couple of reports where you had people prank calling the restaurant. And so can you tell me a little bit about that? So, I mean, that's been going on pre-pandemic. I mean, OK, China's and we had this one person calling for almost two years every day at 730 on a Saturday. Well, every day, especially on Saturdays, he called probably two or three times and wouldn't let us basically hang up the phone. He'd basically make me get on the phone, talk to him for like 30 minutes before I actually hung up the phone. So 7.30 was the time that you call in, hey, um, can I get some dogs, some cats, some... And this would happen every day around 7.30. So, but Saturday, Saturday in particular, when we're super busy, he would basically just take up the entire line for like 30 minutes. So I, I have to pretend I didn't know he was, I you know, couldn't hear him or just basically make oh him God. bad until you hump the phone. So, you know, but that's, I was like, man, what guy has enough time to call every day at 7.30? That's insane. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it was pretty intense. This actually ties into your shirt, mm -hmm. which is love our people like you love our food. Yeah. So I feel like during last summer, especially when there was the spa shootings yeah. uh, and, and the AAPI community was facing a lot of racism and hate. And I, I think a lot of people in the food community were like, you know, let's, let's combat this with food yeah. like let's introduce people to our culture through our food and you know kind of fight the bigotry that way yeah. like what i guess go ahead what but because but because chinatown is such a multicultural place i mean people eating there they're super like chill super relaxed people i never had to deal with too many racial issues inside the actual restaurant itself so do you think some like do you think this might be the perfect vessel for like introducing people to this type of cuisine you know, like fried rice is something really simple, mm -hmm. super easy. Dumplings is something also super simple, simple easy, uh, super easy to make too. And depending what kind of sauce you like, you could kind of make your own sauce for dumplings as well. So if you like something spicy, make the sauce super spicy. If you want something savory, you can make soy sauce, you know, a little bit sour, add some vinegar in there. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of adjusts your own palate, you know, so you don't have one flavor for that one dish. The idea of taking something familiar enough like the wonton and adjusting it to anyone's palate could be seen as the impetus for the crab and cream cheese filled crab rangoon. Widely believed to have been invented at the Trader Vic's restaurant in Northern California in the 1940s, the wontons are a crunchy, creamy concoction made with crab, cream cheese, and a sweet dipping sauce. Oh, and the name? Rangoon is the former name of Yangon, the capital of Myanmar. These wontons have become a symbol of Chinese American food and a blurring of cultural lines that's helped places like P.F. Chang's thrive around the world. The restaurant chain was created in 1993 by Paul Fleming of the Fleming's Prime Steakhouses and Philip Chang, whose mother Cecilia Chang is credited with introducing American diners to a rich variety of Chinese cuisine in the 60s, with her restaurant The Mandarin in San Francisco and later a location in Beverly Hills. Philip opened the Mandaret Cafe in Los Angeles in the 80s, which served as the inspiration for the P.F. Chang's restaurants. It's still open on Beverly Boulevard in its original location under different ownership. And if you're wondering, yes, they now serve crab rangoons, though they were never on Chang's original menu. They're filled with real crab and cream cheese, similar to the ones you'll find at P.F. Chang's. This, this is where we're gonna film the episode, Does It Dumpling? Okay, so at P.F. Chang's, what dumplings? What did you put in a dumpling? Wow, we uh... The things oh. that made it to the menu and didn't. I want okay. to hear everything. Recently okay. and then historic. Yeah. Yeah. Recently has been the miso lobster dumplings. Yeah, that and was we fantastic. We just finished our wagyu dumpling. Mm -hmm. But in the past, we, we've done shumais with uh, bacon and egg. We've done the soup dumplings uh, mm -hmm. with... Uh, we had a chicken uh, soup dumpling. I'm trying to think as we go back. We've done uh, uh, like a glass noodle. A vegetarian dumpling, nice. edamame, and edamame mm -hmm. puree with garlic mm -hmm. uh, as a dumpling. There's just so many things you can you can put inside those that yeah. are fantastic. While we were there for the crab and cream cheese wontons, Stephen Art insisted that we start with the pork dumplings. They're served table side with the dipping sauce poured over a hot skillet for a little dinner and a show. 
on the original menu, but listed as a ravioli, because we weren't sure in 1993 if the general public was ready for like dumplings. Man, and, in 93? Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. 1993. Wow. But quickly it did move over to becoming a dumpling. Mm -hmm. when, when did the company decide that they should call it a dumpling versus a ravioli? Do you remember? Probably be late 90s, I think. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it was on the menu for five or six years before we transitioned mm -hmm. over. Because wow. actually, I, we, we think ravioli confused some guests, and, and calling it what it is as a dumpling uh, resonated more. Mm -hmm. How many dumplings are on your menu? Like, how important are dumplings to the P.F. Chang's menu? <laughs> We've, we will have uh, we have our staple in that we have we have our crab wontons we have our pork dumplings and we have shrimp dumplings. Dumplings are something we can kind of easily move in and out out of menu. Offer as LTOs, limited time offerings. Uh, kind of zhuzh up the holidays or special occasions if we need to. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are they the most popular things on your menu? Popular appetizer wise, lettuce wraps are king. Mm -hmm. uh, we sell four million six hundred thousand lettuce wraps annually. Okay. So they're number one. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, pork dumplings are number two. Uh, we will sell uh, two and a half million pork dumplings, uh, really individual dumplings. Mm -hmm. We make 13 and a half million dumplings a year. A uh, and then crab wontons are number three. Yep. So that's our, that's our top three. Over the course of this series, I learned how to make ravioli, soup dumplings, gyoza, and pretty much everything in between. But I had to try my hand at pinching together a crab and cream cheese wonton. What makes our crab wontons very unique um, and differentiates it from a crab rangoon, we use actually a rock crab. So we have real crab meat within our crab wontons, which makes it very special. So we're gonna add the, the crab into it. We're gonna add our cream cheese. Cream cheese, a very traditional Chinese ingredient. Very, yes. <laughs> this is the fold here. So you can have your thumbs, middle finger, kind of underneath tucked, and then bringing all those to the center, just like that. Nice. And then you can turn it a little bit, just bring it in. Real important to kind of push it in. It's almost nice to have that little piece right, that's your sealer, mm -hmm. so to speak, so when it goes into the fryer, it doesn't open up. Too much? Okay. We'll see. No, because that only the good part will come out. I think you're perfect. Oh, All right. it's perfect. It's our spec. It's supposed to be 0. 0. 0.85 ounces? Exactly. We nailed it. See? I think that's how you did it. Yeah. Right. Pretty close. There you go. Just kind of push it towards the center. There you go. Oh, look at that. Perfect. All right. Fix it. Push it down a little bit. There it is. Look at that. All right. <laughs> Only 200 more to go for yeah. today. Yeah, there you go. The you ones that you actually <laughs> made and were like, oh, yeah. okay. When did P.F. Chang start making crab wontons? That's a great, that's a great <laughs> story. We had to do some we work for that yeah, one, Jen. We had Jen. to do some we research. Uh, because it wasn't on the original menu. Uh, mm -hmm. We believe it, 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 it came about uh, in the later 90s, around 1998, our chef in El Segundo in Manhattan Beach. Uh, I think they were getting a fair amount of guest requests for crab rangoons, as a lot of Chinese American restaurants were, were mm -hmm. now carrying crab rangoons. Uh, so it was in 1998, our chef in El Segundo began running it as, as, as a special. Yeah. And it, it did so well that other a few of the other restaurants picked it up and then it was in early uh, 2000 that uh, they decided it needed a place on the menu and quickly shot up as the number, sometimes number two or number three selling appetizer. And even to this day, we, we use that as we ideate and we're creating dishes. We The crab wonton and how, how quickly it rose to prominence on the menu is kind of our benchmark for, you know, can this, this new idea or this dish perform at the level that crab Crab wonton did so. Why do you think they're so popular? You know, I think it's I think it's it's a comfort food. As I stuff another yeah, one in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're delicious. They're yeah. delicious. They've got to taste yeah. good. It's a comfort food. I think it's very approachable. First, you know, anything that's lightly fried is is yummy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ingredients themselves, crab, cream cheese, uh, and a nice nice sauce to go with it. So why plum sauce versus any of the other sauces you have? It just complements it. I mean, you, if you try it um, with the crab, you get the spiciness, you get the, the sweetness too. Mm -hmm. I mean, typically you'll have a plum sauce with, with a duck, but pairing it with a crab, I mean, it, it just completely takes it to the next level. It's... Is there anything you wouldn't put in a dumpling? <laughs> mm. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, Jello. I haven't tried yeah, everything. Yeah, Jello. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm not, not sure. You yeah, to I, I don't know. Well, I was trying to think. Of, there's cheese not much. Whiz, of, yeah, yeah, there's no, not much. No Jello or cheese whiz dumplings right, ever on the right, menu. Right, exactly. <laughs> 
I don't think jello wontons will catch on anytime soon. Though, if you really think about it, Shaolinbao kind of start out as a meat jello dumpling. Either way, I'll keep trying to learn about and appreciate all the dumplings.